The wash and style is the GOAT of wave methods. Do this method right and you'll end up seeing progress almost instantly. Do this wrong and you'll end up losing progress overnight. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have all the necessary supplies for the wash and style. A brush, I like to use a medium hard brush when I'm doing my washes. Make sure you're using a plastic brush if you have access to one. This way you're not ruining the wood in the brush by using water. A lot of people like to use soft and medium brushes when doing washing styles. And when you get to that medium hard, because the water softens the bristles, it makes it so you can actually get to your scalp. So if you wanna make really fast progress, a little extra tip, try using a medium hard brush. You're gonna wanna use a comb to lift up your hair. Even if you don't have that much hair in your head, you wanna lift that up so you can at least get all the dirt. Out. Need a detangling hairbrush. This is somewhat essential, it's really good for cleaning your hair. But if you're wolfing for any length of time or if you're scramble washing, this is a must. You can't go without a detangling hairbrush, especially if you want a good lather. You need one. This one isn't essential, but here I preach hair health. If you have really good hair health, you're gonna get elite waves eventually. So I like to use this hair growth oil. A lot of elite wavers like to put hair growth oil in their washes, as you see later in this video. This just gives you some added benefits to your hair overall and you're gonna want to decide what type of shampoo you use i'm gonna be using this shampoo bar by 26 king wavy the reason a lot of elite wavers like to use shampoo bars is because the difference between a shampoo bar and a regular bottle of shampoo bottles of shampoo are typically not that healthy for you shampoo bars are usually made by wavers so they're always a healthier option as you can see by the ingredient list shampoo bars provide you with 10 times the lather of regular shampoo bottles the reason is because regular shampoo bottles, the lather is like just like tiny, tiny bubbles. It's still very effective, especially if you haven't done a wash style before. But the lather of a shampoo bar just puts that on steroids. The lather is very thick. You don't even see any bubbles. It allows you to really mold your hair into place, which just skyrockets your progress. So I would recommend picking up a shampoo bar. If you're trying to be a serious waiver, go with the shampoo. And last but certainly not least, you need water. Oh, I put that to my lips. No worry, bro. It's soda, bro. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> now, the wash and style method is called the wash and style for a reason. The method is split into two. One, the washing portion, where you comb your hair out and you get all the dirt out. And two, the styling portion, where you brush your hair to the way you want it, and that's where you really make the progress. So step one, comb out your hair. As you can see, my hair is dirty and nasty, so I'm gonna go ahead and comb out my hair to get ready for the first wash. All right, now that you have your hair combed out all the way, you don't want to comb it back. You can, I'll get into that in a second. But now that you have it combed out, now it's time to get it wet. Pause. Now, when wetting your hair, you want to either A, make sure your bathroom is nice and steamy before you put water in your hair, or you can just be like me and just put hot water onto your head. But the idea with this is that the pores on your scalp are open up. But I think there have been studies to support that when you just put hot water on your skin, it doesn't actually open up the pores. But I really don't know real science. Just get some type of at least lukewarm water, put that on your head, at least for the first wash. Now, what you want to do, you want to take your shampoo of choice. I know a lot of people with shampoo bars, they don't want to waste them so they put an unnatural store-bought shampoo especially when their hair is dirty they wash their hair with that at first but me I'm gonna just go ahead and go with my shampoo bar for that first wash now the lather on this first wash is not gonna be good we're not looking for the lather here the cleaner your hair the more lather you have we're not looking for that lather we're just trying to get the dirt off so first wash let's go Now there's two ways you can do this first wash. A, you can scramble wash. That's when you just put the sample in your hair, put the water in your hair, just go like that, right? I know elite waivers like 360 Juice love to do that. But me, personally, I stopped scramble washing because when I was doing the wash and style incorrectly, I feel like scramble washing contributed to losing progress. If your way is in there, you're not really gonna lose progress, but to stay on the safe side, I recommend not scramble washing. So go in with that detangling hairbrush and wash your hair. During this time, I recommend washing your face. You don't want to be nasty. You want to make sure you're washing your face two to three times a day. So when I'm doing my washing styles, it's usually the time I wash my face. I like to use this, rub it on my face. It's like a shampoo bar, but it's for your face. A face bar, who would have thought? But yeah, make sure you're washing your face, bro. Don't be nasty. So now you want to go ahead and rinse all of this out with warm water. I think around the time of the second wash, your pores are actually open. Just rinse this out with warm water, bro. 
Okay, after you rinse all that stuff out with anything but cold water, now is where the fun begins. So you want to take your shampoo bar or your shampoo. Now I'm going to go in with my pattern. Like I rinse it out with my pattern, I'm going to go in with my pattern to my scramble washer. Try not to scramble if you're not trying to scramble wash. Now, after you applied your shampoo, you want to go in with your detangling hairbrush again. This is where it really comes in handy. As you can see, I still have the old dirty shampoo on it. Don't be nasty. Don't put this in your hair. And make sure you rinse this out. And rinse it out with cold water. So after you rinse it out, now you brush with it. So be proud, man. The noodles. That's how you want your hair to look. After you brush your pattern back into place, you want to take your brush. Here's a little hack. Take your brush, wet it, transfer the lather from this or not. You can throw this away now. Not literally. Take the lather, transfer onto your brush. I don't know how much I recommend this, but if you want a good lather, it's much easier with a shampoo bottle. Now you want to wet it again. Now this is very, very important. I learned this from Juice. No matter your pattern, when you're washing, especially in the beginning and the end of your washes, you want to go in on your crown. What I like to do, I like to brush my crown into place and then slowly in a circle, just come all the way down to my hairline. It's not the sexiest way of washing your hair, especially when you begin, but it's essential. You need to do this in my opinion. No, not in my opinion. It's essential. You need to do this. When you're doing it, it's little taps. It's not like, Arr! especially when you begin on your crown, just little taps around your hair. If you don't like the water, you can take the spray bottle. We can just, just wet it a little bit more. I like to vertical brush as well. Just little taps, little vertical brush taps, so I get all the way down to my pattern. So I got down on that side. Okay, now that you've gone throughout your entire pattern, now it's really time to start the brush session. So I recommend brushing for at least nine minutes, but you can go anywhere from nine to 45 minutes long. I don't recommend going very long with the wash and stuff since you make a lot of progress when you do this method, but it is also very tiring. I go for around 20 to 30 minutes on average, depending on how I'm feeling, if I'm going live, probably brush for up to an hour. I don't recommend going for too long because the longer you go on these washing styles, the more prone you are to mistakes. I can really jeopardize your weight. Go for around 15 minutes, I recommend, if you're a beginner. During your wash, you want to really make sure you're hitting all your angles 100% correctly. Literally, just brushing one angle wrong for an entire wash can cause forks and just do so many negative things to your hair. So you really, I'm going a little bit fast. So I know my angles and I know what I have to do and a lot of my sides are flawless. Yours aren't, so you really want to make sure you're hunkering like you're tinkering down, bro. The goblin tinker in Terraria, bro. You want to just make sure you're, this is how your strokes will look. Just... Basically, it's slow and precise, as precise as you can make it, you know? But remember, have fun, bro. This is probably the, the funnest wave method to do as a beginner. Now, what you want to do is just take the leather to lay it down around the end of your session. And now you want to take your oil. If you don't have an oil, eh, you don't need it. But if you really want to improve the health of your hair, all elite wavers use the oil. I use this hair grow oil by 2.6. Now you just want to drop some in your head.
right, to make sure I get it all on the crown area. It's usually the part of your head. Crown and the front is usually what goes first when you start balding. So just make sure you get it. It doesn't really matter too much because you're going to be brushing in your hair. But just make sure you get a, a good amount. A lot of waivers. Jesus, see Jesus, he likes to put so much until the lather turns yellow. Man, that's maybe, a, might be a bit excessive, but look at his hair. He's, he's, getting, up, he's getting up there in age, but his hair health is impeccable. So you really want to take notes from those guys. After that, you want to go in with a little, little last brush session. For this last little part of this, just make sure your pattern is totally in place, you know? Make sure there's no like rough edges. Cause the way you lay down your hair is the way it's going to come out after it dries. So just make sure every little thing in your ways is perfect. A lot of times I keep going back to areas to just make sure it's all perfect, but it's worth it then. I often find myself needing to do this. Get a little bit more water after you add the oil. It might have something to do with oil and water not mixing, but that might just be my bro sign. And another quick tip, if you find your crown has too much lather, if your lather's pretty thick, take a little spray bottle, mine's broken. Take a spray bottle, spray your crown, and you should be able to see it. It's, it's a crazy tip. I got that from c -Mate. c -Mate KJ. After absolutely everything in your hair is laid, including your crown and your sides like this, your edges, you want to make sure everything's laid. You want to take your brush and steal all the lather from it. Now you want to extra lay down everything. Now, what Juice and Poppy Blast would like to do, they like to put a bunch of water at the end of their washes. I don't really find that too useful, but you do want to have enough water so your lather is a tiny bit watery, but not too watery. So like this, this should be enough. Lay down my hair all the way, especially when using a shampoo bar. When I lose lather, the leg goes down. But I want to keep that thick lather, especially when I'm wolfing for a long time. It's an eight weeks wolf. Especially if you're getting a haircut. The next day, this tip is essential. You want to make sure. You see this? I got a tip from Jeezy. It's all laid down, right? But take your brush. If your brush isn't hard enough, but take a detangling hairbrush. But you should just do it with your brush and just brush your hairline down. This way, your hair is already like completely like straight. It's like brought down. It makes it a lot easier when you're getting a haircut the next day. A lot of the times, but over curling hairlines, this right here, that's a cure to over curling hairlines. Lastly, you want to decide which do rag you're rinsing your hair out. We don't rinse our hair out without the do rag on. You must keep the do rag on when you're rinsing your hair out, or else your hair will just over curl. You'll never be able to get it to lay down, and the entire point of this washing style has just been thrown out the window. So there's two types of do rags, or maybe three, but two main types of do rags you can. Use. A, a old silky, or B, one of these do-rags with a bunch of holes in them. I forgot what you call it. I don't like using the other one because when I find that when I do dry quicker, but I find that when you unrag, the results are a lot worse. So if you have an old silky that you're willing to like, just like let go of, like I can see through this one. If you have a do-rag like this, go ahead and use this one. Your results will be 10 times better. And you want to be very careful. Very careful when you're ragging up. Don't make one crazy mistake, the whole thing comes apart. The way your hair is when, before you rag up, the way it's gonna come up when it's dry. So if you have a big mistake, your hair is gonna be messed up and you're gonna be upset. So make sure you take your time. After you thoroughly rinse out your hair, you know that because you can see your entire wave pattern, it should be like black. You should be able to like do a wave pattern through the do-rag. Unless your do-rag is black, then I guess you can't see it. But after that, you need to wait up to three hours. You want your hair to be completely dried, so you want to wait a long time before you take off the do-rag. Even for me, even if I wait three hours, the little back thing here, that part is still wet and that can cause a lot of problems if your hair is still wet. So make sure you wait the entire time. Some things you can do to cut down this time. One, go to sleep. You're not conscious for like 12 hours so you should be good there Two, swap out your around 30 to 45 minutes swap out your do-rag for a completely dry one it should be dried a lot quicker but for me i'm gonna just let it naturally dry you want to make sure you're not using any heat heat damage after you did a washing style it's not a good idea bro just wait and the results will be way better if you just let it air dry so i'll be back in three hours ready to show you the results ah.